Wecky was the better prospect, at least what I saw, but uh, everybody seems to say that, that stuff started out uh, slow and he's really turned it on. He turned it on at the end of the season and then he just carried it over into the Arizona Fall League, everything that I've read at least. So I, you might be right on on that. Yeah, you know what, like I said, I mean, this is a kid that played at high A, double A, and triple A. Uh, he's a tall, athletic kid. He's got power. He's got plus speed. And like I said, you know, his defense, to me, some scouts said it was plus defense, but from what I saw, I didn't see the arm strength, especially from a corner outfield, to, you know, to give him that 5-2, um, you know, label. But, I mean, the, the, the kid had 33 stolen bases. I mean, he only had seven home runs, but he has that body to him that has the ability to grow. And, you know, his upper body had a small waist. Uh, this, this is a kid that's going to grow into his body, and to me, I think he's going to end up, uh, you know, probably he's a 20-20 guy, 25-25 guy. I really like uh, what he had. Now, Lucky, you know, uh, played at high A, double A, 18 home runs, nine stolen bases combined last year. I mean, the kid's strong. is an athletic uh, infield with a solid bat. He's got some power potential. The only problem is he swings aggressively uh, early in the count sometimes, and, you know, what? When I took a look at him, uh, again, w when I look at, at defense from a player, I didn't see the, you know, the glove in the hand uh, motion uh, being that quick. You know, some of these guys had ridiculous uh, glove the hand motion. And the arm strength is, is okay. I'd probably put him in a mediocre standpoint as far as arm strength. Uh, I could see him, you know, maybe moving to second, uh, getting some time over there. But there's a chance from what I talked to when I was talking to some scouts that this is a guy that could go up there right now and possibly play at shortstop because if you take a look at, the Cincinnati Reds, not a lot established there. It's a shortstop spot, so why not give this guy a chance? To me, he's a right. sleeper hitter. Yeah, and, that's what, and that was kind of what, what jumped out to me. Like I said, I only saw two games, and it was early. It was, well, April and spring training, and it just maybe I saw uh, stubs on a bad night because everything that I've read, and of course what you said, it just seems like he's a good prospect. One last question for you before we uh, cut you loose for tonight. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, in the World Series this year and in the American League Championships League Series, a guy named David Price, you know, who went A, double A, triple A, and then we talked about him last week in detail about, you know, here's a, here's a, a you know, a guy from the minor leagues, a, a minor league guy who actually, actually makes an unbelievable presence with his major league ball club. You see any guy, anybody out there who jumped out at you, who maybe we have not mentioned already, who, and I know David Price is probably an, an, outrage, you know, uh, an outrageous example, but is there any name out there, any guy that really jumped out at you and you said, man, this guy could really make an impact big time with, with a club maybe even this year, this coming up season. Well, you know what? There, there's a, I mean, when, when you take a look at the guys that are out there, there there's a huge uh, amount of guys. I mean, like I said, Matt Wieters is probably the, the best prospect that, that I saw out there. I mean, it's, again, this is a guy that just had a lot of combined stuff that you know, makes him an A-plus uh, type player. But, you know, when you talk about guys that jumped out at me, and maybe it was just the timing uh, for where I was at, but I'll tell you what, man, I saw three games for Eric Young Jr., and the kid was phenomenal. I saw him hit two grand slams in a matter of a couple days. Uh, I saw him steal five bases. Pretty happy. He doesn't have a great arm. I'll give you that. Uh, but when I sat down and talked to him, and I, you know, I asked him, you know, this whole Matt Holiday situation with the potential trade of Matt Holiday, and I asked him, you know, the Colorado Rockies had talked about the potential of bringing him up, you know, putting him in the corner outfield. He doesn't have corner outfield power at all. I mean, he's a, an absolute duplicate of his father, but he's a switch hitter, uh, is a guy that, you know, I think a top of the order guy would replace him with Tavares, who's another guy that's on the blocks um, uh, for the Colorado Rockies, but, you know, to me, he was... In the short amount of time, I saw an absolute brilliant prospect. Now, on the other side, pitching wise, I had an opportunity, and let me tell you what, uh, Tommy Hansen is the real deal, the, re the right handed pitcher uh, out of Atlanta. Uh, he's got about an 88 to 95 uh, fastball. He's got a slider, a changeup, a curve. I mean, this is a, a tall kid. Uh, he's got excellent stuff. And, and I'll tell you what, man, this kid has got some presence. And you, I don't think he'll be the next Greg Maddox or John Smoltz, but this is another Atlanta product that you know, has the potential. Uh, to make it to a big league club next year, especially with all the injuries and quote-unquote retirements that may be happening in Atlanta. So keep an eye on Tommy Hansen because this is another kid, to me, who's one of the best pitching prospects I had an opportunity to check out. Yeah, Eric Young, Jr., actually named uh, uh, Arizona Fall League at a player last week, hitting 400 with uh, two home runs, eight RPIs, and six stolen bases. So, yeah, you saw him on a, pr on a pretty good week, on a pretty good week there. Well, my, my friend, hey, man, I appreciate you spending some time with us. I know it's been a real busy uh Time for you, real busy uh, running around, covering the Arizona Fall League, and they're you know, flying out and flying back. And uh, once again, 
Paul Greco, he's uh, he got a bunch of websites. What is it? Melick and Fantasy uh, or Melick and Greco Fantasy Sports dot com? Is that it? Is that the name of the yeah, website? Yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, yeah, Melick and Greco Fantasy Sports dot com. We're actually going to be introducing um, a new site in the two thousand nine called uh, Fantasy Pros nine one one. Uh, we're bringing in a lot of the great fantasy writers from around uh, the fantasy industry, uh, bringing them all into one site. And I'll tell you what, man, pretty excited about that. And don't forget to check out, and you were in there this week, and you saw the type of uh, action we have, the Fantasy Green Island Live Show, every Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll tell you what, we had 231 live listeners in there, Tim. And, you know, my phone, uh, I give away the, the text messages. The text messages were blowing up. Uh, we'll get emails. We're getting phone calls on the show. Uh, you know what? Everything is falling into place, my friend. And like I said, I have to thank you because you're the one that introduced me to this whole thing. Well, hey, uh, you're welcome. I, I'm glad that you, it's all working out. You also still have your baseball show right on Wednesday nights, right? Yeah, every Wednesday night, but we do it all year round. Every Wednesday night from uh, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. right on the Blog Talk channel. Uh, we're kind of getting a little bit move off the Fantasy Sports channel due to the fact that it's basketball season. But don't forget, let me tell you this, I'm going to be at the winter meetings along with uh, Lenny Mona, Tony Sincata, and my cousin who's the executive editor of Gotham Baseball Magazine, Mark Healy. We'll be covering it. We're going to have five shows a day, my friend. Five shows a day from the winter meetings in Las Vegas. We're going to be there. You're not, you're not going to have five shows a day. You're not going to have five shows a day because you're going to lose all your money at the craft table. I uh, see, bro. I go to work. <laughs> when I go out, man, I don't go to play, bro. My, my whole objective is to bring information to the people from, you know what, I, I said it to you before. I, I, I bring the way yeah, I know. It is from a fan's point of view, man, because that's what I am first. I'm a fan. And like I said, when I was at the Arizona Fall League, I did ball first. And I think you'll hear some of it and see some of it when I do the videos and when I do the audio because there were certain times when I stand next to guys where I was just like, you know, here's a player like Logan Morris, for instance, that uh, unbelievable presence, unbelievable presence. And this is a guy that has an opportunity uh, with, with the trade that happened earlier this week in Florida to actually make the team. He talks about Gabby Sanchez, but he, all the scouts were drooling over this guy. This guy did not take one bag swing the whole time I was there. Well, bro, I appreciate it, and uh, like I said, check him out. He's got lots of stuff going, anything fantasy-related. Mr. Greco's your man. So, Paul, thanks for being here, and uh, we'll, we'll hook up here. We'll look for those interviews, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, get you out again sometime. Have a great night, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate you guys having me. Good luck to you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, boy. So, Paul Greco, uh, unbelievable stuff there. So, uh, lots, of, lots of good stuff. I want to welcome in one of our other normal contributors who's just joined us. Dallas, how you doing, buddy? 